All right, so now we are in the last section of chapter three. And this section is gonna be dealing with more formulas just like we did in 3.4 and 3.6. And we're gonna be doing many of the same things, including simplifying formulas, plugging things into formulas to get an answer, and then starting with an answer and going backwards to figure out what we would have needed to plug into that formula to get that answer. So this is the formula that we're going to be working on in number one, found on page 405 and 406. And even though they don't ask you explicitly to do it, I'm going to suggest that you simplify this formula, just like we did with the breaking distance formula and the blood alcohol formula. This one's a little different though, because that's, we're not simplifying it based on variable values that they gave us, um, we're simplifying it just because the formula is not given to us in a simplified form. So the only unknown variable here on the right is an M. So if we plugged that something in for M, we wouldn't have a formula anymore. We would just have C equals some kind of number. But what we can do is look at this right hand side and clean things up a little bit. All right, so here's what I'm talking about it inside here, this 0.082m tells us, they tell us in the paragraph on page 405, that this represents the cost per mile in maintenance costs. And we dealt with that, I think, back in section 3.2, um, when we were looking at Paula, who was considering renting a car, and how maintenance costs are part of an expense whenever you drive your car, even if you don't spend the money right away. And additionally, every mile, you have to, you're burning up some gas and that take, that's what that 22 cents a mile is. And this $25, I don't know where they go to college, but it costs $25 a week to park there, wherever it is. So these are all of the expenses there that they, and she incurs when she carpools with her friend. And since there's two of them, they split it. They split it. So the thing under my big bracket there is all of the costs the, of carpooling. And that one half rep reflects the fact that they're going to split it. So there's a bunch of places here, but there's some things you can do um, to simplify this. You can look at the fact that there's two different per mile costs, and you can look at this one half and think about something called the distributive property. Um, and so I'm going to leave you with that and then talk a little bit more about the questions they ask. So part B um, tells us to use a formula. And if we made, if we were able to simplify the formula, that's going to make parts B and C a lot easier. Um, so what they tell us is that Paula drives seven miles for her, her um, commute with her friend um, is seven miles each way. So that means her home to her school is seven miles. Seven miles. And the fact is at the end of the day when she's done learning, she gets back in the car and drives home again. And she does that three days a week. They get in the car, drive to school, learn some stuff, and then drive home again three days a week. So what they want you to do is calculate the total cost for Paula, the total cost for Paula um, for this weekly commute. Okay, and you can hopefully again use the formula that you simplify, the simplified version of the formula that I showed you just a second ago, and that's in page 405 in your book. So part C in this asks us a little something different, but it's not so different than anything we haven't already seen. So what they're telling us, well, let me back up for a second. So you will have simplified the formula um, that they gave us, which if you remember, it was C equals one half and then a bunch of stuff in parentheses. And so what you will have done is simplified that into um, another formula. And the M is gonna still stay in there because 
we don't know what m is yet. We're still making a formula with m, and hopefully you use that formula to plug m in in part b. So in part c, you're going to have some simplified formula with m. And what they tell you is that, well, this bus pass costs $22 a week. And what Paula is trying to figure out is whether it's cheaper just to pay this bus pass or to ride with her friend. Um, and so what we need to do is look at this $22 and figure out, well, where does that go in my formula? Is that, so remember M, the M in the formula is miles, right? And the C in the formula is cost. So what we're going to be doing is taking this $22 and putting it in the right place, and hopefully you can see which that place that is, and figuring out what the other variable needs to be. The question, part C, says how many trips to school must she take? And so a trip to school, remember, they told us in part B how far away her school is, and that's a number of miles. So what we're looking for is how far she's, how many miles she has to travel in order for this to be $22. And be careful here, because what the question is asking you is not how many miles, which might be something you need to know to answer this, but how many trips to school. And remember that half a trip to school is just going to leave you sitting on the road, side of the road somewhere. So it only makes sense to talk about one entire trip to school. So that is the final bit there to convert miles into trips to school after plugging this $22 into the correct part of your simplified formula.